Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. This evening's episode is a special tribute to the late Mr. Ray Cordero, known to us as Uncle Ray, who has been part of Hong Kong's music industry for over 70 years. Uncle Ray passed away peacefully last Friday at the age of 98. He is a legend of radio broadcasting and devoted his career to bring happiness to listeners of all ages. Many Hong Kong people have grown up with his radio show, The Way With Ray, nightly at RTHK since 1970. Amongst his many achievements, he was bestowed a Lifetime Achievement Award by RTHK, and the Guinness Book of Records named him the world's most durable DJ. Uncle Ray was also awarded an MBE from Queen Elizabeth II, as well as both the Bronze and Silver Bohemia Star Medals from the Hong Kong SAR government. Here's my conversation with Uncle Ray in the summer of 2021. Hello, Uncle Ray. Hey, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uncle Ray, yes. uh, tonight's show is a tribute to you for your lifelong contribution to the music scene in Hong Kong. You have devoted your career to bringing happiness to many listeners of all ages who have come from all walks of life. Many I have talked to have told me that they have grown up with your show, which has been going on every week, especially The Way With Ray, mm -hmm. nightly from 10 p.m. to 1 p.m. at RTHK since 1970. Thank you for having us at your home, and thank you again. Most, most welcome, Eugene, most welcome. Uh, I'm happy that you're in my home because you're surrounded with the things that I love most in my life. Beautiful music and beautiful songs from all my favorite singers and musicians. Yes, Uncle Ray, we were talking about how much people have listened to your music and been, a, been influenced by you over the last 60, 70 years. Um, what is your feeling on that? You have no idea how happy I can be. We have so many people I know that out there listening, and it's my job to transfer the kind of music that I like to their ears. And if they accept it, then I, I'm very happy. Yeah, you know, a lot of people will listen to the stories behind, and they will be uh, uh, they'll be inspired by the lyrics, don't they? Well, that's part of the disc jockey's uh, work to discover more about the artist yes. and why they have chosen a song to record. And then my part is to tr transfer what they think to, to on the air so, the, so it'll get to the ears of the, of the listeners. Mm -hmm. Angry, um, I, I think well, I've been surrounded by a lot of records <laughs> and I read in your book, it has like over 20,000 vinyl records. Absolutely. Do yes. you have any favorite albums that you play a lot of times? That in is a question I've been asked many times and I'm afraid I don't have the answer because there are so, so many vinyl records. Uh, One that you time, might play most? Yeah, you know, most. Well, you say I, I, I like big band music. Well, I like Glenn Miller, Artie Shaw, Benny Goodman, you know, and I'm more lately Count Basie. Right. So all of my life has just been filled with Beautiful music. So if I'm going to ask you, who's your favorite musician? Would you uh, be able to give us some yeah, sort of well, names? Can I, More than one name? Uh, can I put it this way? I started liking Glenn Miller. Right. And then I moved on to Benny Goodman. Mm -hmm. And from Benny Goodman to Artie Shaw, for, for very, very, very special reasons, mm -hmm. because they each have their, 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 their favorite style. Mm -hmm. And their style will have to please my style so that I, so that I can uh, listen to them as much as I like mm. at home. Mm. I'm sure there will be some music that is not your favorite that you may not like as much. How do you deal with the music? I mean, do you still play them or you, you oh, will play yeah. them on request by the Well, by if, the, by the, if viewers, the, the listeners, listeners request, I'll, I'll play them. Right. But if nobody requests, I'll, I'll just put it aside. To the digital music be able to sort of reproduce the quality that the, the vinyl records can well, do? It's more or less. In, nowadays, in this modern world, everybody has a handphone. Right. And most of them will listen to the handphone, not, not at home. So my, my joy and my thankful to all these people is that if they listen at home, 
they'll hear the ultimate end of the music through their own speakers rather than a small little ha handful right, that they're holding. Okay. So that's, that's a big difference. Mm. You know, through our career, I mean, I've, I was, I've been admiring a lot of the memorabilia that you have in here. And I know that you have interviewed many, many celebrities, international renowned singers. Uh, may I just list some of them, including Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. the Beach Boys, the Beatles, I think you have interviewed them four times, mm -hmm. Cliff Richard, Elton John, the Carpenters, mm -hmm. Ella Fitzgerald, Peter Paul and Mary, Patty Page, Boney M, Nyla Ritchie, oh. Quincy Jones, Connie Francis, Paul Anker, the list goes on. You're running out of breath. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, I've met them all and they're all wonderful people. I like, Are I they nice them. off oh, the camera yes. as well? Well, the thing is, uh, it depends on how, what sort of personality you have. Like yes. in my case, I, I am, I believe I'm a friendly sort of guy. You certainly are. <laughs> so the, when I speak to them, they can feel that I really love their music mm -hmm. and I really love them as a person. So we can get along like, like brother and sisters. Mm -hmm. Anyone that you, is your favorite? Uh, so would you ask that question? Oh yeah, well, he, at the moment, easy, easily in our head is Matt Monroe. Right. The reason is because he was here in Hong Kong and he was in the army. And of course, uh, we have this big uh, program called Beginners Please right. for, for, for the army people, you know. Mm -hmm. And every week he takes part and he wins. So after a while, <laughs> nobody wanted to join because he, he's going to win. Right. So I had to put a special 15 minutes of Matt Monroe sings so, so, that, so that he has his own show and people will start to come in again. <laughs> right, right. You know, as someone who have witnessed decades of growth of the music scene worldwide, not only just Hong Kong, what, you, what makes you think is the most defining moments or in radio music development? That's a very uh, difficult and personal question. In the first place, uh, I like what I like, but I sort of had to transfer what I like to the hearts of the people listening into my show. Right. Some of them may like, some of them may reject that. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully I please most of them mm -hmm. and uh, get along quite well. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise I, w I won't be around for 70 years. Right. <laughs> but how about say for Hong Kong? What happened in Hong Kong's music industry that you think will be sort of a, a defining line? That it says people have changed the flavor completely, maybe the... Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Western music is very, is very popular mm -hmm. at one stage, but then things have changed, haven't they? Have oh, they have. They certainly have. Uh, I, I was. Uh, I'm lucky to say that I, I'm in the music full heartedly. Yes. I've seen the development and how it changes. Like for example, uh, Sam Hoy. Right. Sam Hoy. He changed the whole scene when he came along, and he started to change, uh, switch from English to. Cantonese songs, right? So it, be, it, it became canto, canto pop. Canto pop. <laughs> is it is it Guai Ma Xiang Sing at the time? Guai Ma Xiang Sing is the first one, and of course he and his brother Michael, uh, some for somehow they like me, and I got into their shows. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Michael Michael Hui's uh, version was that said, Uncle Ray is bringing us luck, so we must have him <laughs> have him on our show. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> that's, that's and my anyone part. of the pop canto pop star that you can remember have makes such a big difference? Uh, well, uh, take Sam for example, he started the pop scene, but he's singing pop songs in his own style. Mm -hmm. And later on, he also embraced uh, foreign songs. Right. And changed the lyrics to Cantonese and, and, and got along pretty well. Actually, I think I remember at my student days, yeah. <laughs> Canto pop is very popular. It's very popular, yes. And of course, uh, it clashes with, the, with the, the scene of the discos. Right. Uh, you remember places like Canton, uh, Canton. Canton Disco, uh, the one in Central. Hollywood East. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, a, a lot of, uh, because they can switch now to Canton, uh, Canton, Canton, Canton Pop, right. then the, they make Cantonese songs popular as well. And thankfully, we have Sam Hui because he, he really started it all. Right. Uncle Ray, maybe we'll have a short break and we'll, we'll come back.
in the first part, we talk mm -hmm. about a lot of memories, and yeah. and I'm sure many of our viewers, actually, one of my uh, patients has asked me to interview you because he thinks you are a legend in her eyes. So I've done that for you. <laughs> so I'm sure one of uh, a group that is most popular to people of Hong Kong and the world are the Beatles, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right? And you right. have been interviewed them four times. Yeah. And and thank you very much for showing me a very special tape. tape. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave you to talk to the viewers what this is all about. This is actual mm -hmm. tape that's actually recording of the Beatles, right? That was an, another one of my lucky things that happened to me in my lifetime, that tape. That because tape. I s walked into the EMI office in London with just a piece of paper and a pen right. to, to, to do my interview. So I said, uh, Stan Stern was the man I spoke to. He, he was the manager of EMI yeah, yeah, from the EMI. Right. He was sitting there all by himself, uh, kind of lonely. So I walked in and he said, what can I do for you, son? I said, oh, I'd like to make some, uh, do some interviews. Like who? He said, well, I, of course, like the Beatles. He said, he picked up the phone and he called the Beatles manager. Beatles manager came on the phone. And he said, uh, there's a young man here from Hong Kong who would like to interview the Beatles. And this uh, fellow said, oh, perfect timing. Tomorrow at 2 p.m., uh, Beatles will hold a press conference. Ask him to come along. We would we'll, we'll like to meet him. So that's it. My problem is that I, I was holding a piece of paper and a pen, and that's all. So I said, I said wow, I, I can't do any recording, but I don't exactly. have to record it. So this Brian uh, Stanston was very nice. He said, don't worry, EMI will lend you a recorder. Oh, wow, it's not like striking <laughs> a cash sweep. <laughs> so I said, oh, thank you, thank you very much. But I had no idea that recorder, I thought it was a small little thing, a huge box of huge case and holding a microphone and only a single track recorder. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I have no choice but, but to say thank you. I uh, use that. So I was hanging this. I went back to Hong Kong House, which was uh, sponsored by Hong Kong government. And the whole house was so excited because I'm going to meet the Beatles the next day. <laughs> so there I go. I held this tape recorder, which is very heavy. It was old time thing, you know. Yes. And I came across a bookstore before uh, the, the coming to the Be Beatles headquarters. So I saw the, the book of the four Beatles. I said, oh, I've, I've got to get that. So I picked up the magazine. I said, how much is it? Uh, one in six, something like, one in six, one shilling six, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like, little, like, like nothing. It's right. very cheap. So I bought it. But I had no idea that the whole magazine was the Beatles. Oh, really? <laughs> the oh. whole magazine for one shilling six. I said, my God. So I, I, I had a hump it. And there I go to NEMS Enterprises. And the door opened, bang, the door opened. Paul McCartney walked out and said, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul McCartney. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> so, so they say, he saw me, hey, hey, what's the thing under your armpit? I said, well, it's a magazine on you boys. I just, just bought. Said, can I have a look? I said, sure. So I said, while That's you look- That's Paul McCartney, right? Paul McCartney. Right. Said, while you're looking at it, can you autograph it to me? Oh, no problem. So the, the, my, the magazine was Paul McCartney, so he signed to, to Ray from Paul. I thought, I thought that's it. Do I you get the other three signatures? I'm going to. Very yeah, I was very happy with just that cover. Right. But he flipped the pages and he signed some more. And the whole magazine was signed by Paul McCarthy. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I so, thought, okay, thank you, Paul. So he said, uh, he passed the magazine to John, and then they all signed. The mm -hmm. whole magazine so was John signed. Lennon, John Lennon, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr. Wow. So, oh, that, that thing is worth a fortune. I'm, I'm quite sure, sure it is. So, and it only cost one, one shilling three or something like that. <laughs> oh my goodness, so, so I was very happy. And then I started to do the recording. That EMI loaned me a small uh, five inch reel. And I, I did use it all up, you know, and, and I, was, I was so happy. I walked away with this tape in my armpit. I said, I have the most important interview in my life interviewing the four Beatles at a time when they just, just broke, broke out as superstars, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was a great time in my lifetime as far as radio was concerned. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you for sharing that moment. I can actually feel your, your excitement when you're <laughs> actually doing interviewing. Yes. Right, amongst your many accolades, you have been awarded two most significant awards or medals. Mm -hmm. One is an MBE, the member of the most excellent order of the British Empire. Mm -hmm. You actually got it from Queen Elizabeth in 1987 at Buckingham Palace. And the Bronze Bohemian Star by our Chief Executive Jonathan Zhang in 2008. Yes. What an achievement recognized by two governments. What is your feeling of that? I was, uh, I, I had a very mixed up feeling. I'll tell you why. Getting an MBE from Her Majesty the Queen, although we didn't know who will present it to us because mm -hmm. it, that, what, what, uh, 50 people in the, in the room waiting to meet her, her Royal Majesty. You actually flew into London, didn't you? Yeah, I was in London already. Right. And a very formal sort of introduction. Uh, maybe you'll meet the Queen, maybe you'll meet Prince Charles or, or somebody else, mm -hmm. whoever's on duty. Mm -hmm. So we, did, we didn't know. So I, I, got, I got my my thing and I went line up. So we went to the, the, the Buckingham Palace ballroom. And we all line up, say, okay, my turn. I, uh, we, we can only walk up, walk up to the queen, but we, we cannot talk to her mm -hmm. uh, unless she talks to you, right. you know, which is for, uh, formality. Formal, formality, know. isn't it? Yes. So she looked at me and said, where are you from? <laughs> from Hong Kong. Does that sound like her? <laughs> yeah. I said, from Hong Kong. Oh, I was in Hong Kong some time ago. I, I love the place. I said, well, you're welcome to try, come again. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. I uh, I backed up and walked out. I, I didn't get the MBE yet. It was on the way out. The formalities is they pin the MBE and uh, somebody in charge there pin the MBE and get a box with a ribbon, ribbon and everything handed the box to me, and that was it. My my job was over. Mm -hmm. But I met the Queen at least, you know. But not everybody had that luck. I'm sure you haven't. You know, um, Angare, I know that people in Hong Kong who are all also have done so much for Hong Kong that is recognised by two governments, by the Hong Kong government at the British colony time as well as the Chong'an mm -hmm. uh, Special Initiative region. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing I'm sure no one can surpass you because you also had an award in honour of the King. Do you know who that is? Can you remember? Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come, come again. That's from the King of Rock and Roll, Elvis Presley. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You had uh, recognized by the Elvis Presley Enterprises for your support of Elvis oh. and the Hong Kong chapter of his fan club. For and, and over you, 30 years. Yeah, you actually went to Tennessee to receive the record, yes. the, the award. I went with the Elvis Presley uh, fan club, uh, the president and vice president. And all. We were all there. and uh, But then, of course, they had shows. The, uh, the four gentlemen who backed up Elvis Presley with the vocal group, they were all there as well. And came to uh, a lady presenter mm -hmm. who uh, presented one show after another, came to the final show with me. And then he said, uh, we have a very, very uh, long, long time visitor from Hong Kong oh. uh, who is an Elvis Presley supporter. And we here have a souvenir for him. Let's welcome Ray Cordero. Mm -hmm. So I stood up, everybody applied. So I went up to the microphone and I held this 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 plaque that he mm -hmm. gave me. I said, Well, I have an MBE from Her Majesty the Queen. And now <laughs> I have this from the king. <laughs> everybody wow, three hundred uh, Elvis Presley. That's why I said this record cannot be surpassed by anybody. By the two oh, government, also by the king. Ex Elvis Presley, who yes. else, you know? So, so, so that was uh, uh, but, two um, moments yes. of my lifetime that I, I can never but forget. Uncle Ray, don't forget something that we have in common that we very, feel very dear to is the RTXK. Because in 1997, yeah. you had the Lifetime Achievement Award mm -hmm. presented to you by Paul Anka. Yes. That's special, isn't it? That's another story. <laughs> Paul Anker came to Hong Kong to perform. Right. And RTHK approached him and asked if he could present the Lifetime Achievement Award for two of RTHK's uh, veterans. One was me and the other was Chung Wai Ming. Oh, Chung Wai Ming. You know, oh, you know Chung Wai Ming. Yes. He's a very, very good, uh, he's a gentleman with a nice, deep voice. Mm -hmm. So, 
So we were there, and uh, and but we didn't know what, what happened. Uh, what Paul did in the middle of that that same night, he he took the song that he composed, "My Way," and changed all the lyrics of that song and fitted in, a, a, like you can say, a personal message right. from him to Chung Wai Ming and to Ray Cordero oh, okay. for, for uh, uh, getting this award, mm -hmm. Lifetime mm -hmm. Achievement Award. So, so I went award. up and if you look there, yes. it, oh, it's gone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. we'll, we'll show that to the viewers. That's right. I'm great. We are now coming mm -hmm. at the last part of the show. So we're going to ask you for a question. You're going to sort of answer me for, for short answers. You know, you have been a legacy to many of the local stars. I know mm -hmm. Francis Yip, Albert Lau, mm -hmm. Sam Ho you mentioned earlier, yeah. Sandra Lam. Uh, Ronald Chang, the later time, Alan Tam, the winners, Jackie Chung, Teresa Carpia, Roman Tam, Joe Jr., Teresa Tang. Mm -hmm. Out of all of them, who is the most hardworking person, do you think? Interview. Interview. It's just got to be Matt One Roll. Right. Because I was with him from the very, you can say, day one. But how about local stars? Local stars, well, I, I couldn't, couldn't resist but mention Sam Hoy. Sam Hoy is... Because he, he, he really started... Uh, to introduce canto pop, and he 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 had canto pop. He had Cantonese music added onto the to the music he composed, and he was a monster hit in Hong Kong. Right. That's a start. Uncle Ray, you know, for other people who retire at age of ninety six, I'm going to say to you, we wish you a happy retirement. But with a person like yourself, Uncle Ray, who is still full of energy, I know you got some plans for our. Our, our, our music industry. I think you wanted to um, you wanted to hold a concert coming up to well, it's, it's, it's to help our, our, our industry. Yeah. Okay. Well, th this is a very meaningful concert, and I must say it's the most dearest to my heart because it came, uh, I I was working with Andrew Tuason, right, who is a local arranger for Chong Ho Yao, you right. know and possibly the manager of Chiang Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And he is the son of the, of the uh, uh, Bading. He's oh, he okay. is the band leader for the Hilton Ballroom. The Hilton on the... I, I went there. Uh, yes. uh, well, the, the, yes. in the, anyway, at the top <laughs> four. And, uh, so that, when would that be, Uncle Ray? Well, um, coming up very hopefully soon. Hopefully, before I, I make a hundred, <laughs> because because <laughs> we look forward it, to having that. Yeah, so we, it, it's going to be a fabulous concert right. because uh, uh, all the local, all the most important singers in Hong Kong and around Hong Kong, yes. like from Australia, Francis Yip is from Australia, and the Chopsticks, right, and yes, all yes, yes, yes. they, they will all be there. Um. And hell.